Hello guys, how is it going? It is about that time and indeed Soraka will give us hope. Let's check it out guys. My hair's a mess. This world has such great potential. Let me guide. Soraka, 3 mana 1-6. Support heal my supported ally 4. Level up, you've healed damage allies 4 plus times. What a crazy stat line. What I'll do is I'm just going to go through all the teasers in this video and then we'll come back around and look at all the cards together. Crazy stat line though. Crazy stat line. Curious about the flip condition. So my leaks weren't correct. My leaks were not correct. The first time you heal, a damage ally each round, draw one. Support fully heal me and my supported ally. Three mana, two, seven. Calling strike stonks? Calling strike stonks? That leveled up artwork looks amazing in that form right there. Stargazer. This is a 4 mana 3 4. Rare. When you heal a damage ally, give me a lucid this round. Holy shit. That's not going to be hard to achieve. Wait, wait, what? Why did that. Hang on. Why did this one have a lucid? Sorry, I need to come back here for a sec. Oh, dude, I misread it. Oh, holy shit. Rejoice to see you, Soraka, and I, them. I thought I had elusive. And when it got healed, whoa, that's a little crazy. Righty, so there you have it. Soraka is here. Unbelievable. That's a very amazing stat line. We haven't seen anything like this. Uh, Soraka's, Soraka's champion signature spell is going to be fully heal damage allies. It's a three mana slow spell that fully heals all damage allies. Okay. And we also have the astral protection heal an ally four and then grant it plus four. It's four mana burst speed spell. Uh, it does have the synergy with the healing, so only going to really be suitable in a healing deck. But burst speed spells tend to be quite powerful. I can compare this kind of similar to Bloodsworn Pledge, the free old burst speed spell granting plus four. This is more targeted towards one single unit and obviously more targeted towards synergy. Stargazer seems crazy. Like with all the other cards that we've seen so far, Stargazer kind of starts to show you another kind of win condition. So let's say like you're playing a deck with Braum, you're in free old Targon, you have Soraka as well. Uh, if things don't work out with the healing and things don't work out with the protecting Braum or the Star Spring or the Landmark, I forgot what it was called, then Stargazer can actually be a way to win the game as well. Elusive keyword is very powerful and being able to grant multiple units that elusive key uh keyword in a round is a little crazy you can start to see though like stepping away from free old and the other regions that kind of make sense that bilge water itself has got lots of synergy and uh yeah we can see this like kind of deck building up to tom kench and soraka having similar synergy to how diana and nocturne do although they're not in, in intended to be that way or maybe they are but you know what i mean there's no like night and day synergy it's just heal and be healed kind of synergy um soraka seems very great in terms of like what this kind of deck can achieve it can just shut down aggro completely with so much healing going on a lot of it targeted towards units but then you throw a couple of um like pale uh, guiding touches and star shapings perhaps and then you've just got yourself like a aggro's decks having a bit of a sook so how valuable is this like i think we want to we want to first of all build a bilgewater and soraka deck 
because that's going to be where we begin. I think as players start to get used to this kind of strategy, it's going to be all about kind of ignoring the units and not letting them get value from the healing. So it makes a lot of sense to search for units that get a lot of bonuses from it, or just the ability to ability to damage your own units. There's also an opportunity here to like visit revisit Noxus as well, uh, and kind of look for those Crimson package and the units that will damage themselves. However, at this point, I would assume, and I feel like the best way to build a Soraka deck is actually going to be to go into build water as well. So you can get utilize, uh, utilize those new cards. All in all, Soraka looks like, Soraka looks like a pretty fantastic card. I mean, pre-flip, heal me and my supported ally for, you might not actually get a tremendous amount of value from that half the time. Except if you're playing big beefy units like brought back to protector and stuff, and then you can start to really get value from it. Yeah, I can see Soraka pairing up very well with these new build water cards, obviously. And you've healed damage allies four plus times. It's not going to be difficult. So I don't believe Soraka is going to be a very difficult champion to level up. Uh, protecting her is actually kind of going to be pretty easy. The only way to really deal with her effectively is for a lot of regions is not that simple. So yeah, Soraka is going to be very sticky unless we're playing a Noxus deck. <laughs> so that's pretty fantastic. Uh, Soraka's signature spell is very niche. I don't think it's generally going to be a playable card outside of specifically healing decks, specifically with Soraka and most, most importantly with the landmark card. So you would not play Soraka in a lot of other decks outside of pure heal decks. So I'm pretty excited for this card. I'm probably going to experiment with the Bilgewater cards alongside this to see if we can make some sort of like semi-aggressive deck, you know, plays out on curve and then just having multiple win conditions sounds fantastic. I see high potential in this archetype and it's going to, even if it doesn't become super high tier, it shakes up the meta enough that aggro decks probably going to have to take a new approach to things. So that's fantastic. Anyway, guys, Soraka seems fantastic, as I said. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and I'll see you tomorrow.